Michael Yardney is one of Australia's leading property commentators and he's been voted Australia's most influential thought leaders. He's CEO of Metropole Property Strategist, number one best-selling author for nine books, as well as host of the very popular Michael Yardney podcast. Michael, welcome to the show. Thanks, Nathan. Thanks for asking me back. Now, we've seen a bunch of predictions about the housing market to crash. Michael, we'd love to get your thoughts on the ground. What's actually happening with property market? Well, there's not one Australian property market. So the commentators are saying the Australian property market is going to crash. There are always the negative Nellies that say this, but this is some bank economists and leading economists who are predicting 10, 15, 20% crash in the Australian property market. Nathan, it has never dropped as much as that. There's no doubt that the Australian property market and certain segments are dropping in value at the moment, and we can dig into that in a moment. But the overall fundamentals for our economy and our property market are good. What's currently missing at the moment, Nathan, is consumer confidence. So people are sitting on the sidelines. They're waiting to hear, that's what interest rates are going to get to. That's all we're going to have. Oh, inflation's under control. No, we're not going to get into recession. Because at the moment, Anyone who wants a job's got a job. The incomes may not be going up as much as they want, and your household costs are going up a bit. But most Australian households are financially secure. It's just they're not confident in the future. And in many ways, that's the media's fault, Nathan. Definitely. And you mentioned some segments are probably hurting more than others. What do those segments look like? And what are you sort of seeing based on the buyers that you're helping and who's sort of coming through? Well, the Melbourne and Sydney property markets led the recent boom. So over 2020 and 2021, Australia experienced a once in a generation property boom. Why I'm saying that is we have booms, we have busts, the cycle moves on, but this was one that's unprecedented where every property, A-grade properties and D-grade properties, capital city properties and regional properties, uh, apartments, houses, townhouses, all went up in value. And this was a combination of factors that led to it, in particular low interest rates, a lot of stimulation. The government created a property boom because it recognised the benefit of the wealth effect. If people feel wealthy, if they read that the value of their homes going up, if they feel comfortable, it stopped the concerns that we had that the COVID cocoon we were locked in could maybe create unprecedented levels of unemployment, could have created a recession. So this was an orchestrated boom. It actually worked. You know, they gave out first homeowner grants and all sorts of incentives. But now that incentive has gone and was unsustainable. The property market grew to close to $10 trillion in value, the residential property market. And over the COVID period, grew by almost $2 trillion. Now, people say, oh, everyone took on debt. But against all those properties, Nathan, and you're in the finance business, you would know there's only $2.1 trillion of debt. Now, I'm saying only $2.1 trillion, but that's an overall loan-to-value ratio of, I don't know, 23 24%. So overall, most, well, some people have overcommitted themselves. The Australian property market's doing nicely. But now moving forward, what's happened is the, the, the people are nervous and interest rates have gone from their stimulatory levels to, well, probably now almost neutral levels, but people can't borrow as much, which means that their borrowing capacity has dropped. And a combination of these things have meant that the high-flying markets of Sydney the upper end of Sydney and Melbourne in particular have come down considerably, but those markets are always more volatile. Apartments haven't dropped as much in value. And uh, interestingly, regional properties where people were moving out from uh, getting away from COVID into a different lifestyle, they held their own for a while, but they're falling in value now too, but mildly. So overall, the Australian property markets have only fallen around 3% over this year. But in certain segments of Sydney and Melbourne, they've dropped in value up to 10%, Nathan. And what's your views? We've heard commentators saying that they think the market's going to tr um, fall by 15 20%. Where do you see, what's your horizon from here? What do you see in the next 12, 24 months? You've talked about Sydney, Melbourne, maybe going down, but overall arching theme, do you think property is going to bounce back or do you think it's going to be subdued for a little bit? What, what are your thoughts there? Okay. 
So the argument is when interest rates fell, people could borrow more and so therefore property values went up. And that's right. Now they're saying borrowing capacity and being in the finance industry, you'd know that better than me, borrowing capacity has probably dropped 20% because interest rates have gone up uh, and the Reserve Bank's probably going to have a couple more interest rate rises. But let's imagine I'm a buyer and I could borrow for a million dollars and now I can only borrow 800,000. But you're wanting to sell your property. Now, you don't have to sell your property. You've got a job. You've got security. Yeah, your mortgage costs are a bit more, but you're not in mortgage stress. And remember, most sellers are buyers because they're homeowners anyway. Why would you drop your property in value to 800000 Because that's all I can borrow. What I'm going to have to do is find something I can buy. So I won't be able to buy your $100 million property. I may have to buy an apartment. I may have to buy a townhouse. Or I may have to move out a suburb or two where my budget will allow me. So what are you going to do? Suddenly you lost me as a buyer. But you may have to come down a little bit, but somebody from the adjoining suburb, which they may have been able to borrow 1.3, now can only borrow a million. So they're going to come to your area. So as long as there's no forced sales or desperate vendors, and that's unlikely to happen as long as everyone who's got a job, well, what wants a job has got a job, then I can't see 20% falls or 15% falls because at the moment, the cloud covering the sun is the con lack of consumer confidence. But underneath that is households are in good financial position. They've stored a lot of cash. They're working on their savings, but they're spending. Um, the economy's doing well it's slowing down the reserve bank wants it to slow down it's making it slow down to slow down inflation jobs are, uh growth is strong and we're going to get close to two hundred thousand migrants this financial year but currently there's only thirty three thousand properties advertised for lease now most new migrants rent for a year or two till they find their feet till they find their job till they find a community but of those 33,000 properties for rent, probably only half are for lease. At Metropole, we manage properties for clients in Melbourne, Sydney, Brisbane. We have close to $2 billion worth of property under property management. And when a property comes up for lease, even before it's vacant, we put it on the internet on realestate.com and domain, as do other property managers, to try and find tenants. So half those properties advertised are probably not even available yet. So there's going to be a huge shortage of rental property, a huge inflow of new people coming to Australia, and these migrants are going to get jobs. So they're not going to be in pro uh, have problems because they've been selected because they're the people who want to have jobs, uh, who've got the, the, the skills that we need, I should say. And the other group of people coming are the students. That's great because the international students support a big part of our economy, Education is a great export industry for Australia, and there was some concern that maybe moving forward, the education sector would move to Zoom. Uh, but, but in fact, the answer is no. Uh, they're coming, maybe not from China as much, but from India and other countries. They all need accommodation as well. So what I'm pointing out is the fundamentals are good, but the cloud covering the sun at the moment is uncertainty. And when that moves and it will, and we can have a talk about when I think it will happen, then the markets will pick up again, Nathan. This concludes part one of our three-part series with Michael. The next two parts will be out in the next few weeks, so hit that subscribe button to keep up to date with all things property and finance. In the next two parts, we'll be continuing where we left off here. Thanks for watching.